Welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at installing Remnix to an existing system. Uh, this You could watch this as a standalone video if you're just interested in using a essentially your own Ubuntu um, machine in order to get Remnix, all the tools from Remnix installed, or it's actually the follow on to the previous video, which I'll add a link here uh, to the video itself so that you can see just an introduction to what Remnix is. And so if you're not familiar with Remnix, I definitely would encourage you to check that out. All right, so to get started, uh, we're going to just follow. This is uh, remnix.org, and we'll unfollow. Just scroll down. I've already scrolled down a little bit on this home page to the section called Get the Remnix Distro. From there, I'm going to follow the instructions to add Remnix to a system. Now, there are some actually some pretty important notes here, and the first one being that they uh, are... Uh, stating that the you need to start with a 64-bit minimal Ubuntu uh, 20.04 ISO. It, I don't use this installer very often, um, and so in my limited experience, I have found that trying to use other versions of Ubuntu, because there are more recent versions at this point, the installer itself will check the version, and then it will stop the installation. So it is best to start here. I've also noticed that at the time of this recording, around the time of this recording, that this link no longer works. And so if uh, you are having problems with this link downloading this ISO, you can go to, and I'll post a link here, um, or, or I'll add a link to the video, the, uh, the archive sections of Ubuntu to find a 20.04 distro. All right, next step is to get the installer itself. So I'm gonna copy that, and we'll just go ahead and dock these windows. This will download a Linux executable. So you can see it's a fairly large file. And uh, the next step is to compare hashes. As you can see, running the command to get the hash, the SHA-256 of what I downloaded matches what is on the website. So that's a pretty good sign. And now we need to do a little bit of renaming. So I'll get the web page to catch up a bit here, move that to the top. You can see that we're re essentially we're moving, but we're just which is just renaming the Remnix CLI to Remnix. Then we're going to make that executable by adding the execute bit using chmod, and then we're get, we're going to need to be sudo, and we'll move Remnix to user local bin. Okay, before going through this installation, um, it doesn't say, but uh, I would. I typically will go and update the the system. So I'll do a sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade dash uh, y. I've already done that so that I don't have to do that during this recording. So, but that is something for you to consider. And then the last step here is to install um, GNU PG. Oops, missed type that uh, GNU PG. So there we go. And I believe, at least with this version of Ubuntu, after installation, I guess I didn't check this before, I updated everything, um, but now it says it's already installed. So if it's already installed, it'll just tell you, already installed. If it's not, then it'll get it for you. With that, you have then the option to run the installer. And for this demonstration, I'm just gonna run sudo remnix install. Okay, so unfortunately, I ran into an error right away, but it should hopefully be an easy one, and that curl's not found. So uh, scroll down, I scroll down here to the end of the error message and just type in curl. Oftentimes when you do this, at least on an Ubuntu system, it'll give you some, well, it can give you some suggestions. So in this case, we got some suggestions here for installing curl, so we'll get that done. The, the installation instructions do point out they can take about an hour. It's going to depend on internet connection and the amount of resources that you've given your virtual machine. That is how much processor, how much memory. Um, when it comes to hard drive, I, I did gloss over that. But if you go back and look at the beginning of this documentation, um, four gigabytes of RAM and 60 gigabytes hard disk space. So we, we live in an era now, I think, where hard drive space is generally pretty available and uh, I've always found it to be you know with a virtual machine it's not typically hard to expand your hard drive disk but uh, certainly uh, it's easier to give it maybe just a little bit more if you can spare it so I've, I've never regretted giving my 
virtual machines a little bit more drive space. Um, it does add a little more overhead to the virtual machine itself and taking snapshots and things like that, but um, it's not a bad thing. However, uh, the maintainers do recommend 60 gigs. You might be able to get by with a little less if you're really pinched for space, um, or if you're not sure, just go with the recommendation and uh, you can manage your disk space from there. Again, with virtual machines, it's usually pretty easy to expand those drives in order to um, you know, gain more, more hard drive space for that VM. Okay, once this is done, this could take a little while, then we'll just reboot the system and take a look at what we have available. All right, so after a little bit of time here, uh, finally got through the installation and uh, I'd like to report that everything went smooth, but uh, I decided with this video to really just record my sort of raw experience. Um, I had some issues uh, that occurred during the installation. I can't 100% say what the root cause was. Uh, this, uh, I'm installing this in a virtual machine and the virtual machine kept going to sleep and uh, kind of freezing. And so there was a number of times that I had to sort of restart things. So that could certainly be the issue. Um, there might be more issues with the actual installation and the distribution. Can't say 100%, but um, overall, if we try to run a tool, say OLE dump, you can see that a number of those are now, you know, been added to this system, been added to the path, so we can run those. The instructions here say to go ahead and check the var cache remnix CLI, then there'll be a version folder, and then inside of that folder, well, here we can just take a look at the, the directory contents. So var cache uh, remnix CLI, and then there's the version, and there's the salt stack.log. So I went ahead and opened that up. The inter, or the instructions here say just to, to look for this, um, this error message or status result. And if we look through here uh, for that result false, you'll see I, I've got 22 different matches. So it looks like there was a number of packages. I don't think that would explain any of the, you know, the amount of times that my VM suspended or froze on me. Uh, it didn't occur that many times. So uh, I would say, you know, likely it looks like in this case, you know, say Ghidra, maybe Ghidra had some trouble installing. Um, I'll just scrub through here a little bit more. A lot of issues with Ghidra, it would appear. Um, so anyways, I think this is a, a place you could go to troubleshoot if you really needed to. Again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I typically, if I'm going to use the Remnix tool suite, um, I might as well just use the Remnix distro. I think that has been by and far the easiest way to use that distribution. If for some reason I want to build my own malware distribution or, or essentially build my own malware machine, I should say, I don't, I don't distribute anything, then um, it is pretty easy to just grab the dozen or so tools that I need and install them as I need them. So uh, I would say that, uh, again, if you're going to use Remnix, grab the, the, you know, the pre-built virtual appliance and, and go from there. Uh, but this is an option and this does seem to get you pretty close to being able to customize your own virtual machine. You're just going to have limited options. Okay. Well, that's it for Remnix. I hope you enjoyed the video. Questions, comments are open. So please feel free to leave some feedback. Hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you all in the next video.